Hey guys, giving away a Nintendo Switch on the channel this month, all you need to do is like, subscribe and hit the bell, and then leave a comment on the video when you get the notification. Very important that you leave a comment, the comment gets you the entry into the competition, so if you want a Switch plus a free game, leave a bloody comment guys! <laughs> that, sounded, that's, that sounded really aggressive. You don't have to leave a bloody comment, you can leave a comment if you wish. Uh, Claytano is also giving away a PS4 on the channel this month, so make sure you go and check him out because he's doing exactly the same type of giveaway for me as I am. You go subscribe, like, and hit the bell, uh, and then you'll also be able to get that uh, chance of getting a PS4. So we're starting this video a little bit late at round five. Uh, the main reason is I forgot to start recording. And the reason that we're doing a voiceover instead of a live action one is that I always feel like when I do voiceovers, it's much easier to analyze my play and also analyze my mistakes and also the things that I did well. So it's, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect player. Um, if I was a perfect player, I'd have 100% win rate. I haven't got 100% win rate. I've got like 40% win rate. Um, and then I've got like a 70% top three rate. So I'm not a perfect player. Um, so I'm going to make mistakes, and it's also important for you to learn, you know, um, which mistakes uh, you, I, I make, and then for you guys to try and not make the same ones. So I'm in this game right now, and what I've done here so far is I've essentially paired up as much stuff as I could. I've got two Gods of War, I've got two Gersus Rangers, I've got two, two Taboo Witches, I've got two Lord of Sands. Like, level twos win you the early game. Doesn't matter what level twos they are, you don't necessarily need synergies. Level twos win you the early game. So it's always, always important just to make sure that you are trying to pair up as much as possible. Not only will level 2s help you win the early game, they are also going to allow you to be more flexible um, at, with your compositions. It will help you decide what compositions suit you uh, and which ones uh, potentially are going to be a viable late game option for you. So always, always, always consider uh, your options when picking up the level 2s in the early game because they're essentially going to give you some kind of direction. One thing I always, always get asked by uh, my commenters is how do you decide on what composition to build? Well, I decide by picking up pairs uh, seeing how many level 2s I get from a certain composition, but also by uh, if I pick up any particular core units. And uh, what I've done here is you can see that I've picked up a Wind Ranger and a level 2 Agursus Ranger. And a Wind Ranger and level 2 Agursus Ranger is going to allow me to uh, have some of the core units for a Hunter build right now. Now, the mistake that I made was that I didn't think that picking up the Skull Hunter was worth it. I probably could have sold off the Heaven Bomber and picked up the Skull Hunter. Um, I think in reflection, Skull Hunter is a fine unit in an early God build because he has got a big impact ability. He just got buffed. Um, so Skull Hunter can work okay in early God builds for sure. So don't neglect Skull Hunter. He's not a bad unit now. Um, as well as the fact that the buff to a Gersus Ranger is pretty strong. Uh, Hunters in general are in a really strong position. So I think they're going to be a very contested build on this update. I think you'll see a lot more people playing Hunters. I think Gods are going to be much, much, much less powerful. I think the nerf to Gods is pretty significant. Um, so yeah, I think um, overall this is a good place place to be in. Now God of War as a unit isn't that bad anymore, isn't that bad as a tank unit, which is why I'm looking for God of War anyway in this game. Um, he's still a great tank, and, and Hunters with God of War 3 is still the best uh, front line that you're going to get. So again, in this early game, I, I, I'm just essentially now in the situation where I haven't particularly got a, I haven't got a very strong composition. I've got an okay composition. Wind Ranger is a good individual unit. Um, I've got a level two Agursus Ranger. I've got a level two Skybreaker. I do have a Lord of Sand, which is a pretty solid unit in its own right. I. I'm definitely not in a weak position, but I'm neither am I in a really strong position. You know, I'm not going to be beating many Beast Warrior comps with this particular setup either. So I now have to start thinking about committing to one strategy or the other, maybe selling off some units to try and hit certain um, thresholds, I guess you could say, to try and hit certain thresholds with... Um, uh, economy income so you know when i'm talking about thresholds i'm talking about things like getting to 10 gold getting to 20 gold just so i get that extra little bit of interest but not only that to make sure that i hit the next threshold more quickly too so i snowball my gold advantage so i've got a lot of units here that i don't think fit very well into hunter competitions including my lord of sand including my taboo witches and and actually to an extent if i'm trying to go for god of war 3 the the red axe chiefs that you can see uh, floating on the sidelines here and you and you can see now that i'm a little bit more tempted to just say uh, 
like, okay, let's get rid of the stuff that we don't need. I'm still happy to keep around pairs, um, but, you know, I actually have got a very heavy bench in the terms, of, and also the fact that I'm running a, a Lord of Sand that isn't particularly useful for my composition. The only reason Lord of Sand is good right now is because I've still got the Divinity bonus online, so he's still able to get, um, you know, consistent ultimates off. But other than that, he doesn't really fit a late-game Hunter comp, so he's probably not going to sit too long in my uh, composition. That's also three gold that I have to play with. Um, to take him off, and if, you know, I'm not exactly strong. I don't think Lord of Sand is going to be winning me any rounds, in particular, um, not with the, the build that I've currently got. So it's okay to sell him if I'm, you know, in, in the situation that I'm in, because I don't mind losing. Like I'm not exactly trying to win streak. I'm not lose streaking either. So really, my main goal when I'm middling, which is not losing or win streaking, um, is essentially to just. Uh, get an economy going ASAP get 50 gold by round 15 try and keep up with levels with the win streakers and the lose streakers um, and you can see here now that I've picked up an, an evil knight and a skull hunter I've now got hunters and I also have the agursis buff um, you, know, you could see me like considering whether it's worth it and I think you know I make the executive decision that it is by going for the um, by going for the evil knight the agursis buff with hunters early on is very strong happy to get rid of my divinity bonus it wasn't really offering me anything anything anyway um, and you can see now that I'm pretty committed by round 10 to Hunters. Um, and that's generally the round that you want to have a good idea about what kind of composition that you're going. Round 10, you don't have to be completely committed, but you should have a pretty solid idea about the direction of your composition by about round 10. Um, in general, that's that's what you should be aiming for. The general direction of your composition should be solidified by round 10. So by round 10, I'm pretty committed to going for a Hunter build. Um, you can see here that I haven't really got anything um, particularly good in my shop, so I pick up the source. That's just in case, just in case I suddenly get thrown a load of mages um, and a load of god stuff, and I go god mages, just in case. Again, I'm not 100% um, in, in the bag when it comes to hunters. No one else is really running hunters, at least not to the level that I am. There's a couple of people running like Feathered, which involves a couple of the hunters that I want. But overall, I'm in a situation where um, I I'm, pr I'm probably going to be holding out for hunters. And it doesn't matter if I don't buy things and upgrade things over the next few rounds, because my primary aim over this next few rounds is getting to 50 gold. I'm a little bit behind the curve because I'm middling. So, you know, I'm winning and losing, which means that while my, my, my HP is slightly more protected than those people that have open forted than those people that have... Um, Lost streaked, my economy is in a much worse place. If I look down at the bottom at FiQ, um, he, I think he open forted this game. I mean, he's at 57 HP, so he must have open forted. Um, or he lost streaked. And he's, his economy is at 50, whereas I'm 30 gold behind that right now. He can invest gold happily into levels, and he'll be 100% okay with that. Um, I'm going to sell off the source here to break that threshold of 31 gold. But you can see my economy is actually in the healthiest state apart from... FiQ. A little, a couple of people a little bit behind me, um, but I have the second healthiest economy in the game. Um, I also have a good amount of levels. I have got some level advantage over FiQ. I've invested more levels than he has in terms of getting to the next threshold, so I think I've invested about 10 more gold. So let's say that he's actually about 40 gold and I'm about 30 gold. You have to, you ha you have to look at it in that light because there's no other way that you can look at it. Um, so we're actually, we're doing okay. But, you know, we, we, we really do want to be at that 50 gold threshold by round 15 to ensure that we can then start to invest into levels post round 15 and keep up with the rest of the field that are going to be going towards level 8 pretty rapidly. Um, something that I have learned playing more this season is that it is okay to spend your gold to keep up with levels or to, to roll if you think it's going to keep you in the game for longer. You, you're, you're, you're basically playing a time buying game when you're playing auto chess. You are assessing how much gold you need to spend to keep yourself relevant for the longest period of time. Um, and that's essentially what I'm doing in this game. I'm, I'm judging how much gold I need to spend to keep myself relevant for the longest period of time. Um, I bought the Skull Hunter even though I was at 39 gold because if I won, I would have gone to 40 gold, which would have been great, because that would have got me an extra 4 gold. Um, but setting up a pair of Skull Hunters for my, my uh, Hunter composition in my eyes was much, much more important. So... Um, that's kind of what I went for. Uh, you can see here that I'm just having a look at the field, trying to see what other people are going, how many people are contesting that the units that I want. Uh, I'm primarily concerned about God of War because I'm, I'm pretty committed to having a God of War frontline for my Hunter build. Uh, you can see at the bottom, a guy has got two Gods of Wars, uh, two two-star Gods of War. So Fiq's like, 
lose streaking into gods at this point, um, which I think is a very risky strategy, personally. I think it's a very risky strategy. But, uh, it, you know, it can work if you're committed to it. Uh, I'm getting slammed, so it doesn't matter if I doesn't matter about me selling uh, or buying that skull hunter because I got absolutely crushed by what appears to be like a beast warrior weird combo. Um, but that's okay. Like I'm I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, I'm now about to hit 50 gold by round 15. Um, you know we're we're in a pretty strong position overall, um, and we. No, we're not, okay, that's 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 not really like in my eyes. We're in a pretty strong position overall We're not particularly strong in terms of power on board But what I'm talking about when I'm saying strong position is that I have a good economy I have 60 health left at round 15 with 50 gold on the um With 50 gold on the neutral round when we're, we're not in a bad position basically it could be a lot worse uh, You know in terms of uh, where we're being we're not exactly win streaking 100 HP, but we're not Massively out of the game at this point in time, and I think we have one of the healthiest economies in the game We also have a good base to set up for for a strong composition later on and I managed to win the round going into the uh, the wolf round two, which sets me up with a good amount of HP in the mid game You can see I'm looking if anything is worth buying, but not really uh, Maybe buy the whisper seer if you find some some unicorns, but that's such a micro decision that I didn't really think it was that important um I'm going to get another uh, aggressive ranger here now. I'm going to do something that you probably uh, wouldn't do that much, um, which is taking out the God of War for the two two stars aggressive rangers. The reason, the reason being is that I've actually got um, three frontline units anyway, in the form of the uh, Skybreaker, the uh, the um, Evil Knight, and also the Skull Hunter. Uh, and the reason I've done this is because I, the two two two. two a uh, Gersus Rangers is going to give me more DPS than the God of War will be, will be able to tank. So I'd much rather have the two Gersus Rangers on because they're going to be much, much uh, better at taking out the Wolves. Uh, and we should be able to buy enough time with the Skybreaker and the Skull Hunter to allow us to beat this round. It's going to be a little bit touch and go. I think it'll be very close. Uh, but overall, I think in general, you're, you, this is a good enough set of uh, units to beat the Wolf round. If only just you can see here that it is very close very very close we we, we won by two units but i think we made the right decision overall to be able to beat the wolf round which is very important because it's a huge item farm and because items are so easy to combine now items are actually a lot more important so if you can't beat the wolf round you actually nullify your chances of having a stronger mid to late game by losing out on the items um so i get the two star god of war which is insane um Jokes on me, I probably could, could have picked up that Whisper Seer and actually got a bit of extra gold, but you can see here that I ended up getting um, it on the next roll anyway. The reason I'm rolling here is because next round is the round that I generally consider going to level 7, so I'm going to use this round to just find any extras. <laughs> Something that you will laugh at me for, for this game is that I don't pick up any Evil Knights, um, which might strike you as a little bit odd. Um, and it definitely is a little bit odd, for sure. Uh, the reason being is that I want to replace it for a Soul Reaper eventually. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to find a Soul Reaper soon. Like, I'm surely just going to find a Soul Reaper soon. So it's a waste of gold to buy and upgrade um, the Evil Knights, because I'm just going to lose the gold on them later. Because if you upgrade... If you upgrade um, Evil Knight to a 2-star, it won't sell for anywhere near as much. I believe it sells for 5 gold, uh, whereas you, pe you, you paid 9 gold to get it. So it's a, it's a, it's a net loss of 9 gold. Um, so no, Sorry, net loss of um, 4 gold. So in my head, I'm like, I don't need the Evil Knights because I'm going to just replace it for a Soul Reaper eventually. It's just there to fulfill the Agursus buff. But the amount of Evil Knights that I get thrown at me this game, you, you probably, you'll, you'll just laugh at me. The other interesting thing is that I'm very, very close to having a three star um i'm very very close to having a three star agursus ranger and so that is actually really really big for me because three star agursus ranger is, is an incredibly strong hunter unit um that in general uh will carry you a lot of in terms of late game dps and she just got buffed as well like agursus ranger just got buffed like by a considerable amount in combat as well so i'm actually in and now in a pretty comfortable position we've actually also picked up the dwarf sniper if those of you that don't know dwarf sniper the dwarf bonus now means it targets the unit with the lowest hp which means it basically finishes off units at such an incredible range that it doesn't even need to move for it it actually makes it an incredibly strong unit because one of the things that was very frustrating in in, in fights was that your units would often never target the lowest hp unit it was all about where they were on the board in respect to your other units dwarf sniper now from a very, very extended range, targets the unit with the lowest HP, basically nullifying unit advantages for stronger um, for stronger players, which I think was uh, 
was I think very very good change for Dwarf, and it's actually made the synergy very powerful. Um, I still think it's only powerful in personally. Still think it's only powerful in. Um, Hunter, I, I, or you know, or just randomly putting in a, in a helicopter. I probably wouldn't run Dwarf Sniper um, in too many other compositions just for that particular bonus because it does take up a unit slot, which can be very powerful. But actually, as an individual unit in the early game, Dwarf Sniper has now gone up in individual power, um, which is very, very strong. And you can see now I've got two of them. They're going to focus down those units with the lowest HP, um, you know, in conjunction, and that means they're going to slowly take out units on the field that are. Uh, giving my enemy a, a unit advantage. Now, obviously, versus some of these stronger compositions, I'm still struggling, even with the three-star Agursus Ranger. The reason I'm struggling with, with the three-star Agursus Ranger, by the way, is that I actually have almost no offensive items on her, so she's relying on her base itemization only. Um, I'm, I'm basically juggling now between leveling up and rolling for units. I need to find an upgrade for my... Door Sniper, I need to find an upgrade for my Wind Ranger. Um, these guys are like core level 2 units that I need to find level 2 at some point. I also need to find Siren and I need to find Shining Archer because obviously with the Skull Hunter that will give me the 6 Hunter bonus and 6 Hunters is pretty strong in this update because of the buffs to the individual units over the course of the last few updates. Um, I'm also obviously looking for more Gods of War. Uh, I want to find a 3-star God of War. 3-star God of War is going to help me have a really solid front line for a Hunter build. Uh, but in general, we, you know, like I said, I still think we're in a very strong position. We're going round 19. We've set up for level 8 really nicely. We have got a 3-star Agursus Ranger. Well, I mean, what more could you really ask for in terms of Hunters? Um, and now we just have a couple of other kind of key units to find to set me up uh, and put me in a good position. I'm saving the... Um, the uh, mana generation item for my Siren, by the way, just in case you're wondering why I hadn't um, used that on anything. I'm saving it for my Siren pretty much exclusively. Uh, at this point now, I'm keeping in the, the um, by the way, I'm keeping in the, the Skybreaker just until I find uh, one of my two-star upgrades or I find another Hunter that I want to replace it for. Skybreaker is still a good body. He has a lot of um, damage, you know, individually. Uh, no, not damage, sorry. He's got a lot of HP. He's got, he's got a good amount of HP on his body, so it's okay to just have him in as someone who's going to soak damage for you. He's also still pretty good 1v1 in the late game because of the micro stuns. Um, so I just have him in as a body because I don't really need anything else in over him, um, and I still need a bit more of a front line at this point in time. So I finally found some damage items. Usually I'd put them on Dwarf Sniper, but because my Agassiz Ranger is 3-star, I'm basically going to funnel, funnel everything onto her for the time being. Um, I, you know, if you really want to play proper late-game Hunters, you put most of it on Dwarf Sniper because he survives the longest usually, and he has the longest amount... Uh, he has the longest range. Um, but because I've got um, him at... Uh, because I've got him at, uh, her at 3-star, it's usually just better to have... Uh, the stuff onto the Agassiz Ranger, just because she's going to deal the most damage for the, t for the time being. Um, I do a couple of rolls here, and you can see now this is the time to get rid of Skybreaker, because I've picked up another God of War. Um, and I might as well roll down to 30 gold, because I don't have a threshold that gets broken. I get taunted with the three, th the three Thunder Spirits, which is something that I never see in other games, but I had a really good set of upgrades on those last couple of rolls. Um, enough so that I'm going to be very strong going into these later rounds. In fact, so strong that I'm probably in a situation where not many people can beat me now. The only major upgrade I'm going to find at this point in time is going to be a Siren, um, and that Siren will probably replace, uh, I would say, one of my God of Wars once I find it. Or I go to level 9, and then just bring the Siren in there. But I think, uh, you know, until we, uh, at this point, we're actually very strong. Um, you can see that here I'm obviously struggling versus this, this one guy, but this is a guy who's sort of got a very, very strong... Um, Warlock, Beast, Warrior composition, but we were very close to beating them. Um, and I think, you know, with a couple of extra little upgrades, getting Shining Archer to level 2, um, getting in my, my Siren, we should be in a situation where we'll be almost unbeatable. I'm actually, like, I'm still looking at the refresh thing, because I was like, why is it taking so long? Like, what, what fight is taking so long that we're in this situation? Um, I find a Shining Archer, and just need to find her level 2 now. Another God of War, of course. Um... I actually pick up the Skull Hunters here, because we are searching for uh, three stars at this point. I also have an egg, which means that I could go for a egg three star God of War. I could also go for an egg three star um, Dwarf Sniper, for instance, or even a Skull Hunter if we find it. Uh, I actually roll down to zero here because I just found so many potential upgrades that I was like, you know, screw it, we're so close to getting some major power spikes. But now that I've got the two star Shining Archer, uh, I feel pretty comfortable with where we are in the game. 
like I said, just would be really keen to get one more, uh, to get a Siren, and then once we get a Siren, I'd feel really comfortable. Like, obviously, I'd love to have a three-star God of War too. Uh, we are close to getting a three-star God of War. We just need one more God of War, and then we can use an egg. Um, and then that actually frees up a slot for the sli Siren really nicely, because we can keep our Agursus bonus on as well. Uh, and again... I don't know if I skipped over a Soul Reaper, but if I did, I'm really sad. But I have been ignoring the Evil Knight because I just felt it was a waste of gold overall. So now we're essentially just playing the um, the waiting game. Um, I do want to get to level 9 this game. I, in fact, what's really funny is I find a Tsunami Stalker and a Siren in one go. Um, so this is something that is, is pretty niche when it comes to, uh, to Hunters. It's something that's pretty niche when it comes to Hunters. Um, when you're playing Hunters and you find a tsunami stalker before you find a um before you find um a three star skull hunter just put your tsunami stalker in um it's it's usually better 99% of the time uh, and you also get the marine bonus out of it which makes you slightly better versus magic damage which is one of the hunter's weaknesses they generally tend to suffer versus magic damage um so having the tsunami stalker in there does give you that big bonus of having that magic damage reduction so things even even things like pirate captain ultimate you're going to take slightly less damage from which is actually something that's pretty big uh, and worth considering and you can see here that now i've got the six hunter bonus in we're doing slightly better even versus the number one player in the game which you can see here he's very strong he's got a beast warrior comp but we're starting to beat him so we're beating him not convincingly but we are beating him which is the most important thing um about this uh, that you can see here uh we beat the number one player so and now i'm like okay we don't actually need to roll that much anymore uh we can chill uh, and it won't be you know we can basically try and work to get to level nine we can find some of our uh, three stars uh, i am looking for one more god of war which i find which i really probably shouldn't have rolled there but i was greedy i think if you were to um I think if you were to reassess that yourself, you would have probably said no need to roll there because you'll probably find a God of War eventually and you're in a strong position. But now that I found a three-star God of War, in my head I was like, justice. I have justified rolling there. Even though it probably wasn't necessary, uh, we did it anyway. Uh, and now we're basically like, okay, we need level 9 at this point. Um, we, we don't technically need level 9. We've got everything that we need at level 8. But level 9 would be nice because it would give us a little bit of extra security and would allow us to add um, another uh, core unit to the, to the field. I think if I were to reflect in this game, I probably would have tried to save a little bit earlier and go towards level 9. But again, it's not something that is completely needed with the game that I'm in. Um, I don't necessarily need level 9 this game. Uh, and I accidentally put two shields on my uh, God of War, by the way. I don't necessarily need level 9 this game. Just for the pure fact that I actually have the 600s, I have the Agursis, I have the Marine, and I have God of War to do all of my tanking. So there is another way that I can approach this game by saying... Um, I could just go for three stars, like I've got an egg, I could go for a three star uh, dwarf sniper, I could go for a um, three star, well I would have gone for a three star um, shining archer, but obviously I just ended up selling her. I also want to go for a two star siren, I need, and, and again two star tsunami stalker would be a really nice uh, boon as well. But what I probably end up doing here is just saving up a decent amount of gold over the next few rounds because I'm pretty sure I'm going to win most of the rounds now. And then I'm going to go and spend that gold looking for upgrades. Uh, I think actually something that's going to help me out here is a three star dwarf sniper. I think dwarf sniper being such a key unit now means that he's uh, a very powerful three-star upgrade in Hunters. So if you're going to upgrade any of your three stars, I would recommend trying to go for Dwarf Sniper, probably over Wind Ranger. You don't really get that much out of a Wind Ranger upgrade at three-star. He's probably okay just being being left at two. But with Dwarf Sniper, you get a pretty solid upgrade out of him because his, his basic attacks are really strong. He's got a very quick ultimate cast time. And with the new changes, it means he can finish off and execute people much, much more readily. You can see that I'm a very greedy player here. Um, I wouldn't do this all of the time. Um, I wouldn't recommend rolling like I'm rolling in this situation, just simply because um, it's it's not particularly gold effective, and also I would much be probably be much better off and in a much more secure position this game by going towards level nine. Uh, and I'm not going to get to level nine by spending all of my gold. The reason it's not so bad is there aren't that many other people that are investing a huge amount of money into levels this game. Um, so I'm in a situation where actually it's okay because everybody else is kind of spending their gold at the same time. Uh, and nobody else is accelerated to level 9 very early on in this game. So I'm like at level 8, but everybody else is almost at level 8 as well. And I'm also beating most people too. Uh, 
I'm also two Dwarf Snipers away from a level 3 Dwarf Sniper with the Egg, which means I'm very, very close to having a super strong late game, uh, and I'm very, very tempted to just keep rolling for that. I also pick up an Egg here, which uh, I'm going to lock because the Egg is, again, uh, going to give me options in terms of getting a 2-star Tsunami Stalker. It's going to give me options in terms of getting a 3-star Dwarf Sniper, um, and I'm quite happy to just upgrade my lineup rather than just go to level 9. Now, again, on reflection, probably better to go to level 9 safer to go to level nine I, I think if the gamble pays off and i get a two-star tsunami stalker i get a two-star a three-star dwarf sniper then okay i made the better decision but that's a much harder gamble to play than saying let's just go to level nine level nine is much stronger um it gives me an extra unit on the field um it can add an extra front line it can add a utility piece i could have added dark spirit for instance um and it, I would have been in a, probably a better position overall. Like, if I replaced Soul Reaper, uh, I'm sorry, Evil Knight for Soul Reaper, and then added Dark Spirit at level 9, we'd have the Warlock bonus as well, uh, which would be very, very powerful, um, you know, with this particular composition. But for me, I was just like, ah, do you know what? It's fine. Uh, there's Soul Reaper, by the way. Finally find him, uh, which means I can sell off my Evil Knight eventually. Uh, I, Soul Reaper's even got more HP than Evil Knight, although he does maybe not have a more effective HP because of the uh, the ability of Evil Knight, but I do like the healing that he provides to the team. Uh, I think Soul Reaper overall is one of the best units in the game. Um, I think he slots into almost any composition because of the Warlock buff now, being only two Warlocks. Uh, Positioning-wise, by the way, you might wonder why I've positioned like this. Well, front left is God of War. I want him to take the most damage. Back right is uh, Dwarf Sniper because he has the longest range, and he. I also want him to survive the longest because he generally does the most DPS. I, I then put the... Uh, Wind Ranger on the corner next to, uh, just above Dwarf Sniper because I want him to have the best angles for firing his, um, firing his arrow. And then I just put uh, the Agursus Ranger in the middle because I want her to be as protected as possible, especially versus Assassins. And then Shining Archer next to Dwarf Sniper basically as a body, body blocker. Shining Archer is not that important. She's there to fulfill a sick Hunter bonus. Um, her damage is kind of irrelevant and everything else isn't, isn't that important in the grand scheme of things. She's literally there as a body and also to provide the six Hunter bonus. So you can see that we're going into round 29 and then into round 30. Generally, when you approach a neutral round and you're in a good position, you just want to save over the next two rounds. So on round 29, I'm going to save. Round 30, I'm going to save. And then I can make a decision about where if I want to spend or if I want to uh, roll it down. The way this game has been going, I basically just like rolling it down because I want to get a three-star Dwarf Sniper. I want to get a two-star Tsunami Stalker. Um, these are all big upgrades that will provide a lot to my team in the in the grand scheme of things. Um, this You can see this God player here actually um, is very, very strong uh, and actually ends up winning because he's got an incredibly strong composition, or at least, yeah, just you can see hits me and I end up losing my win streak here, which was the last time that I... Uh, one of the things that gets that's really punished me from a my positioning he, i didn't really consider the positioning of the god player but b also pos, uh, punished me for spending so much um i pick up another uh, egg here by the way which basically then convinces me to um which basically then convinces me to roll because if i find one more dwarf sniper we've basically got a three-star dwarf sniper uh, and then i do find another dwarf sniper and it's a three-star dwarf sniper so i get i get rewarded and now the only other major upgrade that i'm looking for is going to be um soul reaper and tsunami stalker uh so both of those are things that I could get to two star. Um, I actually end up switching my Gersus Ranger and my Wind Ranger around. The reason being is that I'd like to protect my Wind Ranger as much as possible, and I'm thinking that actually it doesn't matter how uh, or where my Wind Ranger goes in terms of angles. Uh, I'd maybe like to just keep my, or at least put my um, Gersus Ranger in, a, in the safest position possible. So now that my uh, my Door Sniper is, is is rank three, I'm starting to load items onto him, including the Wraith Shard, which is going to massively increase his attack speed, which is very important. You saw me put the Dracula Mask onto my Gersus Ranger. The reason I put my Dracula Mask onto a Gersus Ranger is because if I find a Quarter Staff, um, or a Wooden Club rather, I'm going to be able to make Frantic Mask, which basically is the she's the the best unit for it overall, uh, especially at three stars. So that's why I put the uh, the the um, the Dracula Mask onto my Gersus Ranger. I also switched over to the other side because of that God Player. Um, I essentially want to be able to split out a little bit more, and I also want to be able to sort of draw that Mage Comp out of the corner. Um, but you know that's just one of one of the things that you need to be aware of. I'm not actually worried about the assassins at this point in time because we have a massive three star backline with Dwarf Sniper being incredibly tanky at, at three star two. So assassins in general are, are the least of my worries. You can see me just checking out how Fikey's doing versus me on the other side, and actually it's worked out much better as you can see. Um, I ended up 
uh, beating him because I switched positions. And that's exactly why I switched positions in the first place, by the way. Um, well, actually, I drew with him. But that's, be that's a better outcome than losing. That's exactly why I switched positions in the first place. It basically breaks his comp up and allows me to be a more single target focus when it comes to using my hunters to focus down a particular unit. So that's why I actually switched to the other side. Um, I think in general it was the better decision versus that god player. I was hoping that we might be able to knock him out if we, if we fought him. I, I think positioning versus almost every other comp here doesn't really matter. But versus FiQ... Um, if I managed to, to land him and actually get the win, then then I would have been in a better position. So I don't really have any major upgrades to be searching for now. So there's nothing that I really need to roll for. The only things that I could upgrade are going to be my Soul Reaper and my Tsunami Stalker. And Tsunami Stalker is a bit of a long shot upgrade. Uh, and Soul Reaper is... Um, something that I'm very happy to, to wait to come naturally. Getting him to two star is not going to be the, the biggest deal in the world, basically. And this is a guy playing uh, the, uh, I think it's a knight, yeah, gla knight glacier, like, I don't even know what he's building, but he absolutely crushed me because he had a three-star werewolf, um, which was very, very strong. Uh, the three-star werewolf was, was incredibly strong, and I couldn't really beat it, so that's an, a cause for me potentially going back to the other side. I, I, I Again, I'm in a situation where he's now got a three-star werewolf, and I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, right, he's got a three-star werewolf. It's probably best for me if I go back to the other side. I think I've got a better shot versus a, a god comp. Um, I've got a better shot versus a god comp than I do have versus this three-star werewolf. And again, it'd be much better for me if all of them attacked my uh, god of war initially. So if you're asking why I did that with why I've done this is that because versus the warrior comps god of war is much more effective at tanking so if I put him at the top left versus the warrior comps most of the warriors are going to crowd around god of war as you can see right here they're crowding around god of war they're all attacking god of war none of them are attacking my back line and that's one of the strengths of having god of war on the front line versus the warrior comps because um essentially he is your main tank um and he is going to be if lucky he's going to be the person that's going to be essentially tanking um those auto attacks for you while your hunters do the work um you can see here that i'm a little bit struggling uh i find a tsunami stalker rank two which is important to use the egg for it and now i'm basically looking for a soul reaper as well uh, i want a soul reaper rank two that will help me solidify this game really nicely but tsunami stalker rank two is good enough and i find one extra soul reaper which is good too uh i'm not getting to level nine i don't really think level nine is, is a major deal at this point in time um but Tsunami Stalker and Soul Reaper rank 2 are major deals, uh, and so that's what I'm essentially looking for. And now with Tsunami Stalker rank 2, I think I'm going to survive a bit better versus this god comp, uh, and be able to get the big knock-up on them, um, which I didn't. But irrespective of that, we got we got a good uh, Siren Ultimate off, and the Siren Ultimate allowed us to take out the Storm Shaman, which means he didn't get a multiple cast of the Storm Shaman Ultimate off. And this was a very, very close affair. I could have lost this, but we were pretty lucky... Um, when it came to the um, the hits of the Shining Archer. And a couple of other people got knocked out at the same time, leaving loads of items out for me. So this is the, the item combination that I'm now going to start doing. This is, a, this is where it gets a little bit dicey. I'm basically going to try and combine as many items as physically possible. Uh, I get two Frantic Masks on my Gersis Ranger, which is huge. Um, I'm going to get another set of armor onto my... Um, Another set of armor onto my uh, God of War. I basically put everything that I can onto my uh, Wind Ranger, and now I've got a really stacked comp. I'm going up against the um, the Werewolf guy, uh, so I ended up putting my God of War slightly to the left. Oh, sorry, this is for the um, this is for the the Black Dragon King. But I, I I will end up putting my God of War on and, keep, and keeping my position exactly the same because again, the best chance of me winning this is having um, my God of war tank as much as physically possible for my um tank as much as physically possible for my team so if i just have my god of war on that left side as you can see here um it's the three star werewolf guy i have my god of war on in this position he's going to be able to tank immediately protecting the rest of my lineup for the most time possible so i'm going to leave him here just one space out to the left because all of his comp is going to be on the left side of my board so i keep my god of war in this position and this means he's going to tank a little bit better for me and hopefully give me this slight edge when it comes to beating this guy also importantly i found a massive armor reducing item for my dwarf sniper which means he's 
is going to be much more effective at taking people out. As you can see, I start to actually just like cleave, like really just cleave through uh, a lot of these warrior players, as you can see here. And then with the Sarin ultimate going off because we protected her with my God of War, we actually put ourselves in a very strong position and we end up beating him pretty convincingly and taking the first place. All through a little bit of positioning, but also the itemization that we chose for Dwarf Sniper and for my friend, uh, my guest stranger, puts me in a super strong position. And we end up getting the win with Hunters, which are very strong on this update. And we did it at level eight as well. Did it at level eight, which is very important. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy this because Hunters are very strong and I hope you find some success with them this update.